So now we get to a parabolic equation equal to kappa times this. And it's not only in parabolic equations, but actually any equations that has a second order derivative. And here, if you have second order derivatives, it is actually appropriate to specify boundary conditions at both ends of the domain. Is it the shape then? Because the uh, it is going to set the boundary condition in the common out of the set the domain. Why is that? It's actually because the behavior of this equation again is no longer a wave. It's a wave that gets dissipated, smeared out, right? What does smearing out mean? It means if you if you perturb the equation anywhere, information actually travels very fast towards both directions, right? The speed of traveling actually depends. I mean, there is actually no definite speed at which the information travels. If you have an exact discontinuity, it smears out immediately. The speed is actually infinite, right? So basically, if even if the wave is going towards this direction, you can actually specify boundary condition on the right hand side. It doesn't matter if it's a conflict because the any discontinuity is going to be smeared out immediately. It's it's almost a, it's something mostly like a boundary layer uh, on the right hand side. So anything hits it, uh, it's going to be uh, you, you won't the wave actually won't reach exactly the boundary. The boundary condition is still going to be satisfied with a thin layer, and how thin it is depends on the ratio of the dissipation term to the advection term. There is a non-dimensional number you can you can derive something similar to the Reynolds number in fluid mechanics. Okay. Anyway, so here we are just looking at the equation with the dissipation but with no advection. So boundary conditions should be applied to both ends of this equation. And there are two types of boundary conditions you can apply. One type of boundary condition is similar to the fixed boundary condition we have in the previous case. So a fixed boundary condition is also called the Dirichlet boundary condition. It's just a name after a mathematician Dirichlet that uh, uh, analyzed, uh, did a lot of uh, partial differential equation analysis uh, early in the history of analysis. But there is a different type of boundary condition you can apply. It's called the Newman boundary condition. Hmm? What else was named after Newman? Oh, that's von Norman. That's, uh, that's actually a different guy. Okay, so that boundary condition is actually saying my derivative of u at x equal to 1 is a fixed value, for example, 0. Okay? This is a, a different type of boundary condition than fixing the u at x equal to 0 equal to, let's say, 1. These are two different types of boundary conditions. And uh, uh, as an example, so we are looking at a heat so, so, I mean, this equation is called a heat equation, right? It's, it can be used to model the transfer of heat in a solid uh, uh, domain. When would you apply, so if, if this U is actually temperature, when would you apply Dirichlet boundary condition? Yeah, when you actually have contact with something that has a very, uh, either very high conductivity or something, basically heat bath, right? So you, so you know the temperature at one side of the domain. All right. In what case would you apply a Newman boundary condition? 
when it's an insulated wall? Yeah, when it's an insulated wall, at which case you know partial t, partial x, would be equal to zero. Yeah. Or, yeah? Yeah? Oh, the end of a fixed beam. That's actually, I, I'll get to the structural problem uh, right now. Uh, but like for, for, for temperature, for, uh, for solving temperature, another case would be if you have, for example, radiation that uh, is on, on top of uh, one surface, right? Where you actually know how much heat transfer actually goes into the domain at that surface. So here, du dx would not be zero, but be a fixed value you compute from the, for example, radiative heat transfer. Okay, so so these are the two types of boundary condition you can apply, and actually you can also mix them, right? A linear combination of u and du dx is equal to something. It's called a mixed boundary condition or hybrid boundary condition. Question.